Hello folks. Merry Christmas and thanks again for watching. Today we will talk about the possibility of the rapture at the full moon, which will happen a day or two after Christmas. The date depends on your time zone. If you live in America, or countries that line up with this side of the world, the date of hopeful expectation is probably December 26th. If you live elsewhere, then the date may be December 27th. I'll explain more later. We will also look at what is going on in the heavens, where God has placed the sun, the moon, the stars, and even asteroids at just the right time and right place for signs He is giving us. There are scriptures and other signs we will review that seems to line up with these post-Christmas dates. We'll even look at one date that has indications it could be when the tribulation period begins. So even though I am a watchman, I am not a minister or prophet, and I don't know for sure when the Lord will come for us, or when He will start the judgments of the day of the Lord. I am simply giving my view of what's going on, by using the Bible, along with the latest news and information I have gathered. And if you're not sure if you'd go to heaven when you die or when the rapture occurs, I'll explain how you can be sure you will go there at your appointed time. Jesus is the light of our Christmas, the joy of our hearts, and the hope of our world. Isaiah 61 reminds us, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. This scripture is for us to know that Jesus is the light, as represented by our sun and the full moon. The reason we are looking at December 26th to 27th, is because there will be a full moon at that time this month. Scriptures that lead us to believe the Lord could come at a full moon include Psalm 81 3, which says, Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. Scriptures mentions that a trumpet will be blown at the rapture, and since we are headed to the marriage feast of the Lamb after the rapture, we can consider this could be that feast day. Proverbs 7 talks about the full moon being the arrival time of someone on a journey. Verse 15 reads, So now I have come out to meet you. And then verses 19 and 20 say, He has gone on a long journey, he has taken a bag of money with him, at the full moon he will come home. The King James Version uses the words at the appointed time, instead of full moon. So the full moon is an appointed time. The full moon on December 27th is at 33 minutes past midnight, UTC time. Jesus was crucified at age 33. And Strong's Concordance says the number 33 translates to come. Come, now. Farmer's Almanac says December's full moon rises near sunset for several nights in a row, December 25th, 26th and 27th. How perfect for the Christmas season. Here in the United States, we will see the full moon for December is 100% illuminated on December 26th at 7.33 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. This is the first full moon after the winter solstice, and it falls right during Christmas time this year. One of the reasons we might expect the rapture at a full moon is because it is believed by many Bible scholars that there was a full moon at the crucifixion, which could have been on April 6, 30 AD. Because the resurrection was Sunday, and the crucifixion is believed to be Friday, this means we are looking for a year in which the full moon was Thursday or Friday. We know there was a full moon on Thursday evening, April 6, 30 AD. And remember the Jewish calendar days change at sunset each evening, not at midnight. According to the book of Esther, Esther was taken to the King Ahasuerus palace in the 10th month, which is the month of Teves. The Talmud does not specify the exact date, but some sources suggest that it was on the 15th of Teves. That date is December 27th in 2023. For believers today, the significance of the book of Esther is that it coordinates with the rest of the Old Testament to foreshadow Jesus as deliverer and mediator for God's people, as explained in Luke 24, 27 and 44, and John 5, 39 and 46. Esther 2, 17 explains the crowning of Esther as queen. And the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she found grace and favor in his sight more than all the other virgins. So he placed the royal crown upon her head and made her queen. So Esther was married to the king in the month of Tebath or Teves. The identity of the bride is generally considered within Christian theology to be the church, with Jesus, our savior and king, as the bridegroom. Looking again on December 27th this year and going forward to November 20th, 2030, we find that it is 2,520 days, the exact length of the tribulation period. November 20th in 2030, the 24th of Kislev, starts the eight days of Hanukkah that year, 
when the first candle is lit on the nine candle menorah. This date in 2030, based on the Torah calendar, would be the end of the seven year tribulation period, and the possible second coming of our Lord. According to the Hebrew calendar, the 24th of Kislev, and the first day of Hanukkah in 2030 should be December 20th. That would be 2550 days from December 27, 2023. That date in 2030, based on this calendar, would also be 1290 days after the abomination of desolation takes place at the midpoint of the tribulation period. We see this mentioned in Daniel 12:11, where it says, and from the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate is set up, there shall be 1290 days. So we see the Torah calendar and the Hebrew calendar disagreeing with each other as to when Hanukkah will be in 2030. But either way, Notice that both calendars come up with this particular feast for the last days of the Antichrist and return of the true Christ. Now our next wonder is why would the end come at Hanukkah, as opposed to any of the other feast days? Here is one explanation. Abomination of desolation is a phrase from the book of Daniel describing the pagan sacrifices with which the 2nd century BC Greek king Antiochus IV Epiphanes replaced the twice daily offering of the Jewish temple, or alternately the altar on which such offerings were made. Hanukkah commemorates the Maccabean victories over the forces of the Seleucid king Antiochus, who reigned from 175 to 164 BCE, and the rededication of the temple on Kislev 25, 164 BCE. Led by Mattathias and his son Judas Maccabeus, the Maccabees were the first Jews who fought to defend their religious beliefs rather than their lives. The third temple will be rebuilt during the tribulation period, and the Antichrist will cause the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the tribulation, by stopping the animal sacrifices by the Jews, and putting himself or an image of himself in the temple and demanding to be worshipped as God. At the second coming, Jesus will deliver Israel from destruction by the Antichrist. Nations will be punished for their sins. Those who have received the mark of the beast will be judged. Then Jesus will take authority over the earth and remove the rule and reign of the Antichrist. The next question then is, will the marriage feast of the Lamb be held on December 27, 2023? I'm not sure it will happen on the day of the rapture, but when we look at this scene at stellarium-web.org we see in Gemini the full moon and the word feast beside it. This word, feast, is the name of an asteroid that just happens to be sitting next to the moon on the day we are expecting something big might happen. We are reminded here that the moon represents the light of the world, Jesus, and as the bride of Christ, we shall join him at that great marriage feast in heaven. On top of that, it is said by many that Gemini represents the union of Christ and his church. God is definitely speaking in the heavens. Luke 21, 25 to 26 says, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. Here you see another scene from Stellarium furnished by Rapture at Hourly Watch, showing the full moon and celestial bodies in Gemini on December 27, 2023 at 33 minutes past midnight. Constellation Gemini, the twins, symbolizes the corporate witness of the marriage of the right man, our prince or king and savior and right woman, the bride of Christ or the church. These heavenly bodies are listed below and mean the following. Some were mentioned on my last video, but I think they are worth repeating. Moon, this symbolism is found in the New Testament, where the moon is linked to the coming of Christ and the end of the world. From statement in an article at whatdoesbible.com. Toda, thanksgiving, expressing gratitude and adoration to God. Hideo, excellent man, hero, husband. Divine, God is divine. Adoria, reward of valor. Celeste Child, Heavenly Child Messenger, an angel, or a person who carries a message Truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life John 14 6 Babylon, Confusion Tabora, Jesus was transfigured on Mount Tabor Asteroid Day, UN sanctioned day of public awareness of asteroid impacts Lazarev, Resurrection Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus. Feast, a large and rich meal usually eaten to celebrate some occasion, like the marriage feast of the Lamb. 
This clip is about the possibility that the tribulation period could start on New Year's Eve. Daniel 9:27 is the well-known verse that says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So this is talking about the Antichrist coming on the scene when he, along with nearly all the nations, confirm a covenant for seven years, which would be the length of the tribulation period. This website page at Focus 2030 shows a countdown clock that is constantly changing. As of the moment this page was copied on December 20th, 2023, there were 7 years, 0 minutes, 11 days, 1 hour, 20 minutes, 36 seconds left before the end of the allotted time period for the UN to achieve implementation of all 17 SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. Their goal is to accomplish all of this by the end of the year 2030. This ticking time bomb is posted at focus2030.org. As of midnight, December 31, 2023, seven years will be left to get this done, as mentioned in Daniel 9 27. 1 Thessalonians 5 3 reads, When they say peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. The peace and security document shown here is called the Human Rights Report. This is page 1 of 10 pages. Where will you be when the tribulation period begins? When it does start there will be sudden destruction and people will not be able to escape. Will you be in heaven? Or still here on earth? Just what is the great tribulation, anyway? GotQuestions.org says the tribulation is a future time period when the Lord will accomplish at least two aspects of his plan. First, he will complete his discipline of the nation Israel. Second, he will judge the unbelieving, godless inhabitants of the earth. The length of the tribulation is seven years. Ephesians 2.8 tells us, For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. In other words, you can't be saved by being good enough. It is grace that brings salvation. So what must we do to be saved? Number 1, accept that we are sinners. Number 2, accept that we are worthy of death because of our sins, so we are to confess our sins. Number 3, acknowledge what Jesus did for us on the cross. Number 4, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Number 5, invite him to come in and reign and rule in our life. Revelation 3:20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. Hi, this is Bill of Crossheart Ministry. Won't you reach out and touch the Lord now? He's at the door, waiting to be invited in to your heart. Even though I don't know for sure, the Lord will come right after Christmas to rapture those who trust Him and protect them from the horrible tribulation period. I know He's coming very soon, and we must be ready. You can be ready if he does come in your lifetime. Or even if he doesn't come while you're alive, you can be sure where you're going at your death. You can say in your own words that you repent and that you trust Jesus and believe in him as your Savior. It doesn't take much if you're sincere. But right now, I'm going to say a prayer, and if you wish, you can pray along with me. Even if you believe you've already put your trust in Jesus as your Savior, you might want to pray along with me anyway, just to reassure yourself that you're ready for the Lord to take you whenever He calls you. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner and have broken your laws. I understand that my sin has separated me from you. I'm sorry, and I ask you to forgive me. I accept the fact that your Son, Jesus Christ, died for me, was resurrected, and is alive today and hears my prayers. I now open my heart's door and invite Jesus in to become my Lord and my Savior. I give him control and ask that he would rule 
and reign in my heart so that his perfect will would be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you reached out to the Lord and repented and now want to turn from your sins and trust in Jesus' death on the cross for the payment of all you've done wrong, then the Lord has heard your prayer. Trust him to save you and take you to heaven when it's your turn. Now we recommend that you tell someone. We recommend Billy Graham Prayer Line. Their phone number is 1-888-388-2683. Someone there will be glad to answer your questions or pray with you. You can also go to their website at peacewithgod.net. Thank you for watching our video. I hope it blessed you. Why not share it with someone you love or care about? You may help someone make a decision for trusting in the Lord for their salvation. May the Lord bless you and your family this Christmas season. Merry Christmas.